Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Boise Neighborhood Interactive 2020. This is our 315 session. Uh, this session is called Engaging Neighborhoods in the City of Trees Challenge with Daniel and Lance. So go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this uh, on this virtual conference here. Um, we'll be talking about an exciting new initiative for the City of Boise, the City of Trees Challenge. Um, so among other things, the goal of this initiative is to plant 100,000 trees in Boise by 2030. Um, as you can probably tell, that's, that's going to be a big lift for us. It's, you know, 10,000 trees per year. Uh, but uh, it's something that we really can't do without community support. So once again, thank you for taking some time and uh, learning about it with us here today. So we originally were going to have the uh, City of Boise's mission up here, but we decided that you guys have probably seen it probably about a thousand times at this point if you've been attending the conference. So what we then uh, went to was uh, reframing our mission for the City of Trees Challenge and through the lens sort of of the uh, City of Boise's mission. So that's what we came up with this. Uh, and this is really what we want to do through the through the City of Trees Challenge is to build a resilient Boise for everybody. Um, we'll do this by investing in a healthy environment and investing at the same time in the local green economy. Um, that's our mission statement. Let's see. So I'll take this chance to introduce my co-presenter here, Lance Davison. Um, Lance is uh, the coordinator, serves as the coordinator of the Treasure Valley Canopy Network. Um, and he has really been with this uh, with this uh, program, the City of Trees Challenge, since well before day one, I would say, like he's been, he's been plotting and, and scheming. I feel like about uh, planting trees for for years. So, uh, saying he's been with us for day one wouldn't do him justice. Uh, anyway, he's he's really leading the charge with all of our outside of uh, Boise work, all of the outside of the city work, and uh, it's uh, it's just been a pleasure to work with him. He's uh, uh, really broaden the horizons of this initiative past what uh, would have been possible without him. So, um, Lance. Thank you very much, Danny. And uh, I get the honor of presenting Danny Roop. Uh, Danny is a sustainability specialist for Boise Parks and Recreation. And uh, I met Danny just a few months ago, I guess, when we started working on this. He really is the lead for the City of Trees Challenge, along with partners in public works across Parks Department and the Planning Department. And he's a pleasure to work with, a real strategic problem solver. Uh, he is an Idaho native, so he's one of our peeps. And uh, yeah, we've just created a really great team. So it's fun to present this opportunity where the city has partnered with our nonprofit, the Treasure Valley Canopy Network, and talk about how we can engage all of you in the City of Trees Challenge. So thanks, Danny, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So the agenda today, um, this is this is what we've got on the docket. First, we want to give a little overview of uh, let you all know what the City of Trees Challenge is. Um, then uh, Lance is going to give uh, some background on sort of why it's important for our community. Um, then we're going to move into these data-driven strategic investments and, and what that is code for is how we are going to do it. So, you know, we've got the what is the City of Trees Challenge why it's important for us, and then how we're going to accomplish it. And finally, we'll, we'll end off with sort of who all is involved in this um, and, uh, and give you an overview of that. But uh, we'll jump right into it with uh, what the City of Trees Challenge is. So the City of Trees Challenge is a tree planting initiative. Um, it's, it's a way to get, to get trees in the ground. We want to plant, uh, uh, like I said earlier, 100,000 trees in the city of Boise over the next uh, 10 years. Um, but what makes the City of Trees Challenge special as a tree planting initiative is that this, it, it acts as kind of an, it's a hybrid urban rural tree planting initiative. So not only do we want to plant 100,000 trees within Boise city limits, we also want to sponsor and plant 235,000 seedlings um, in porous around Idaho throughout the uh, course of this challenge as well. And that's how we've came up, come up with this tagline that you'll see in a lot of places, one tree for every household, one seedling for every resident, because uh, those numbers weren't just pulled out of thin air. 100,000 is roughly equivalent to the number of households in Boise. 
235,000, which is the number of seedlings we would like to plant is roughly equivalent to the, uh, to the population of, of Boise. Um, and, and, and that's, that's what we're shooting for. But, uh, the, I mentioned that these are called, uh, tree planting initiatives. Another term you'll see a lot in literature is, uh, our nature-based solutions and, or nature-based mitigate mitigation strategies. Um, and that's because the whole reason that these tree planting initiatives are sort of gaining popularity, the whole reason people are talking about them, talking about planting trees and planting more trees, uh, is because they act as nature-based climate solutions um, and they help mitigate the amount of carbon that's in our, in our environment. So um, I, I said that it's a tree planting initiative, but at its heart, it's really a climate solution is, is what we're talking about here um, in the planting of these trees. And over here on the right, I have some of our uh, eco benefits that are calculated via our, uh, our online calculator, which we'll show you at the end here. Um, so, uh, like I, like I said, we, we have one focus, which is climate and, and another focus, which is community. I'll talk a little bit more about the climate focus, um, for now, because the, it, uh, we, we came up, we came up across this problem early on in the city of trees challenge and sort of thinking about the city of trees challenge. How do you know if you planted a hundred thousand trees in Boise over 10 years? And it's not really a simple question to answer. Like, yes, you can go out and count trees, you know, which is which is time consuming and 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 difficult. Uh, we we had some other options. You know, we could just take canopy cover um, uh, metrics uh, at before and after. Kind of, we can do some estimations. Um, and I, I said that you know counting trees is is time consuming and difficult, but that is the solution that we we kind of settled on here. Um, and the reason we settled on counting uh, individual trees uh, through, through this is because that also gives us the opportunity to really show the impact that these trees are having. So if we count these trees and, and get some metrics about these trees, their, uh, ideally their species, their size, their planting situation, um, then, we can, then we can easily calculate these ecosystem service benefits from them. And, and really show the impact and how we're making a difference with this tree planting, planting initiative in Boise. Um, and finally, just on the climate side, this is a long-term uh, investment in our, in our uh, urban canopy. It's, uh, it's, it's one thing to just plant 100,000 trees, with, but we're really interested in not only planting those 100,000 trees, but also supporting those trees that are planted and supporting our existing trees as well in Boise. Um, from a climate standpoint, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to go out and spend the resources and the time to plant these trees if we're not then supporting them and making sure that these trees thrive. Um, spending a bunch of resources on getting a tree to Boise and planting a tree is uh, kind of all for naught if it, if it doesn't thrive and then pull down carbon from our atmosphere. Um, but Lance will kind of talk a little bit more in a slide here about the benefits of those trees. Let me talk, just touch on the community focus of this, uh, this initiative as well. Um, we, we really saw this initiative as a chance for us to address um, some things in Boise, some, some issues surrounding environmental justice, some issues of inequality. And we'll dive deeper into those uh, as well in a, in a few slides here when we talk about the data that we're using to influence uh, sort of how we make decisions about this program. Um, but also we just wanted to continue Boise's legacy as, as, as the city of trees. You know, we, we wanted to live up to that moniker and, uh, and really, you know, make it, make it meaningful for a new uh, generation of Boiseans in, in this tree challenge, so. Um, with that said, I will hand it over to Lance, and he's going to tell you a bit about, about why it's important for our community here. Thank you, Danny. And uh, yeah, we're going to tag team this back and forth. I just put a note in. Um, please do ask questions, whether it's through the Whova app or the chat, and we'll get to those. Um, so this dream really came about um, because Council President Elaine Clegg was really excited about an opportunity to give our citizens the opportunity to engage in climate action. And so uh, Elaine approached us early this spring with the idea. 
Um, she's been supporting the community forestry program for a long time in parks department and uh, the canopy network has been working with the city for over 10 years on these initiatives. And so it's really exciting to Danny's point to really embrace uh, what it is that's so important and close to our hearts about living in the city of trees. So uh, we have a few pictures here of the North End, the North End Neighborhood Association is a big partner of ours and they care a lot about preserving their existing large trees. And sometimes those large trees need to come down. So Dan, you can click on the next one. Um, we've got a really good story that we put in the North End News about a large silver maple that needed to come down. And it really, we were able to tell the story of how that tree is now gonna be um, available in the form of tables and different furniture. Um, so we work on all those different bits and pieces. And so Elaine's vision was brilliant with the chance for each and every homeowner to engage in helping improve the health, health of our community and also the health of our climate. Um, so this is uh, my son checking out that tree removal. Um, so the other good thing is that this is an actionable goal. So this 100,000 or this 100,000 trees, um, it matches the number of uh, homes that we have in the, in the Boise area. But we also know that we have that many potential tree planting locations because of data that we gathered uh, years ago. And so this shows that we do know there are potential planting locations. So where we will be strategic about where we plant those trees. And we also know that today we receive hundreds of thousands of dollars of benefit for stormwater and uh, cooling of buildings in the summertime and millions of dollars of benefits for human health impacts from our trees. So as we plant more trees, we can measure how it improves those impacts for our climate and for our health. And finally, uh, the opportunity for you to have an individual impact at your home, engage your kids, um, get people invested in the opportunity to plant trees, to have a true impact. And we'll talk a bit as we continue about this, about how we're building a healthy city for all citizens um, throughout all neighborhoods, which is where we need your help. And we're doing it together and looking to grow beyond the city of Boise as well. We'll kick right. it back to Danny to start diving a bit into the data piece and how we're doing that. So, like I said, we're going to talk, tell you guys a little bit about what the City of Trees Challenge is, why it's important. And now we're getting into sort of how we make decisions about, uh, about where trees are planted, where trees should be planted, areas to target, that kind of stuff uh, in this tree planting initiative. Um, so over here on the right, you will see a um, sort of an image taken from the Map the Canopy tool on Treasure Valley Canopy Network's site, which is a really awesome tool. I would highly encourage everybody to go check it out. Um, it's fun to play around with. But uh, this this shows canopy density across, across Boise. And so the areas of uh, the darker colors are associated with higher canopy density on this map. Um, and as you can see, it's it's not uniform. You know, it's 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 a like a patchwork quilt of of different uh, tree densities across across the city. On average, we have about sixteen percent uh, tree canopy coverage in in the city. But uh, like I said, that's not it's not uniform. Um, and these areas of high tree density really lead to these uh, these benefits that Lance talked about. You know, cleaner air. Uh, cleaner water, higher property values. They 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 have a, a ton of a ton of benefits that they add to our to our community. Um, but uh, currently, you know, not everybody benefits from those um, equally, at least. So this is one sort of data source that we'll be that we'll be using um, moving forward to determine areas that that we need to focus on. Second, I'll, I'll bump to Lance for this because he's very familiar with the urban heat study. So the other fun thing about working with the Canopy Network, like Danny said, we've been doing this a while. The City of Boise has been an amazing partner. We were approached about five years ago by some partners at Portland State University to join a, I think it was a group of six different cities across the West where we actually went out and measured in real time last summer street temperatures early in morning, middle of the day, and in the evening, and they created this heat map for us. So this heat map is up on Map the Canopy now. I'd encourage you to take a look at it. 
And we're also working with the climate division to do some outreach work around that. So uh, follow us on social media, check out our website. We're gonna have a really neat uh, mapping product out of that as well. Uh, but what we find is where there's more tree canopy, you have uh, lower temperatures and it's much cooler. So you see like in the north end up there, the blue colors, that is cooler. Uh, and then the red areas downtown, that's where it's hotter during the day. And so we're looking at strategically investing in neighborhoods where the heat is higher, that if we plant trees, we can reduce the temperature. And that does so much more than just make it a pleasant place to walk. You're gonna get out and recreate, you're gonna be more healthy. Um, it improves air quality and water quality. And also uh, as our friends at Idaho Power have learned with their shade tree project, you can actually reduce peak season energy use by planting trees. So trees really are a climate solution. Uh, like Danny said, a uh, nature-based solution to helping us solve some challenges as heat rises in our climate. So one of the pictures that I'd like to show is in the summer, I have one of these heat guns that you go around. And this is in August of 2019, I believe. I think it was 93 degrees outside. Um, under the shade of that tree, it was 87 degrees on the surface of the sidewalk. It was 107 degrees in the sun. So that just shows you a really good picture of the impacts that a tree can have on the environment where you live, work, and play. And we'll kick to Danny on the last piece of how we'll put it all together to work with you to target tree planting. Right. So, you know, there's there there's really these three key pieces of data: the the tree canopy, the urban heat study, and this is the third piece. And and this is our our newest piece of of sort of data that that we're using the community development analysis that was done just this year by Vitruvian Planning. And this was a huge study that was done. It's available. Uh, to check out, it's a it's a it's a large document, but uh, and it's definitely worth a look if you haven't seen it yet. It's available on our website down there at the link provided. Um, this uh, this study looked at, at a ton of different things um, that that were available through um, through through census data. Um, it, it had a ton of different attributes and everything from income and housing costs, uh, disposable income, basically, and to health outcomes, uh, access to, to food outlets, access to recreation, access to green space, that sort of stuff. And, and through all of this, they, they identified sort of, this is all done by census tracts, not neighborhoods, kind of like the other ones. Um, but uh, they identified these areas in the, in the city that, that are, are kind of have a higher need than, than, than other census tracts. Um, based on all these attributes that, that I that I gave you an idea of just now. And uh, and so this is this is kind of the, the culmination of like the community portion um, of our um, of our uh, initiative. So so this this the the first two pieces of data sort of address the the more climate the climate based uh, uh, focus of our of our initiative and this addresses the community based focus of our initiative. Um, but this will make sure that we're really addressing those those areas of environmental justice and and addressing inequality throughout this throughout this initiative. Um, so the idea is that we will take all of these uh, data sources, the urban heat study, um, the the canopy, um, the urban tree canopy layer, and also this uh, this data that we now have from uh, Vitruvian. And uh, and sort of combine all three of those data sources into a heat map of tree need across Boise, um, and this will ensure that we kind of we we can focus on particular areas of Boise to get the most bang for our buck um, uh, from the trees that are planted, um, so that we're not uh, we're not replicating uh, things that don't need to be done across Boise. And this is this is an area that we're that we're going to be focusing on. So uh, we have uh, we have 500 trees that we're giving away this fall. We've been giving away trees every weekend in October here for the last few weekends. We we held back uh, uh, 70 of those trees that that we're giving away um, for a shot at this like targeted approach that I that I just said. It's still uh, early on in the in the works, and this will be a little bit of a trial year for for how that targeting can be done. 
but this is the area that we're that we're going to be specifically targeting to try and get those trees planted in 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 this area specifically. All right, Lance. Thank you very much, Danny. So this is the part that I really love. I do love trees and I love what they do for our communities. Um, but to me, you don't provide those solutions without bringing together great partners. So um, the Treasure Valley Canopy Network, like Danny said, is helping to stand up this program in Boise, but we also have a vision to grow it beyond. We also know that we need the help of neighborhoods, schools, of volunteers. That's why we're gonna work with neighborhood associations to help implement this. We're talking to Boise Public Schools. They're doing a lot of new tree plantings as well. Um, the other fun thing is City of Boise, it's not just the Parks Department that's doing this. They're taking the lead, but the Climate Division is heavily engaged. The Planning Department's heavily engaged. So a lot of cross collaboration is happening. And then we're also partnering with the green industry, working with nurseries to grow more trees so that you can go purchase trees that can go in to support the City of Trees Challenge. Our tree care companies are really supporting this and the landscape industry as well. So everyone has a spot at the table to help improve our local climate. Um, we, as I mentioned, will also challenge other communities to join us. Uh, we've had a few Treasure Valley communities with interest in joining and we've really focused on standing up in this first year Boise and then we'll start growing out what that challenge looks like for other communities in the coming years. Uh, the other thing that we did was uh, the Nature Conservancy of Idaho is a big, a big partner in the Canopy Network for years, and uh, they are helping us work on the seedling planting. So we're looking at doing some planting in the Boise National Forest to start, and then in other national forests and state and private lands across the state of Idaho. And they've just been a great partner to lead that challenge in bringing this urban initiative to also influence our rural communities around us as well. Uh, the Boise Farmers Market has been huge to help us distribute these 500 trees. I see more and more partnerships coming out of that relationship with the Farmers Market. We love working with them, they've been excellent. And there's so much overlap with um, growing good food and with, uh, with planting trees as well. And then we've also joined um, several nationwide and international initiatives. The city of Boise is now a tree city of the world approved by city council and mayor this last spring. Uh, we're also a member of the Trillion Trees Initiative uh, through 1T.org, which allows us to do a number of things. In addition to the city investing money into this, we need to raise a lot of private funds as well and foundation funds. And so these national partners help us to do that. So we're really excited about who all is involved and embarking on this adventure with all of you over the next 10 years. I think we're good for the next one, Danny. So I encourage you to join us. Go to our website, which is at cityoftreeschallenge.org. Uh, this is a great picture of our first event early in October with the mayor and uh, the steward of the City of Trees Challenge, Council President Clegg. And you see people here from um, all over the city engaged in it and our partners with the Nature Conservancy. So it's been really great really great partnership to grow. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how you can join the challenge. Um, Danny's gonna pop up our website. So when you go to our website, um, you can learn about why we're doing the challenge and what impact it's gonna have. And then you come down where it says Boise Residents and you click on join the challenge, make your tree count. And once you click on that, this uh, really nifty crowdsourcing page comes up. So you can actually go in and plant your tree all those different colored dots in there on that map are people's trees that have already been planted and you can um, click on it. We need to know, like Danny said, sorry, dog, <laughs> species, um, the size of the tree and the land use that allows us to help calculate the ecosystem service benefits as, uh, as the tree grows. And then it shows like here, as those trees grow, not only were we gonna count the number of trees, but we're gonna show the benefit that those provide for carbon, air pollution, energy, and stormwater. So it's a really good way to show the impact because that's so important to us. And then I encourage you to engage with us on social media. Um, the Canopy Network is active on social media as well as uh, the city of Boise. So go engage with us, connect. I think you all can really help us with the Nextdoor app. 
Uh, I know neighborhoods use that quite a bit, so you can help us reach out through that. And we just uh, look forward to engaging you in that process. And finally, um, we wanna have a chance to chat with you all. There were a few questions in the chat. Um, I encourage you to raise your hand or use the Whova app, or um, we've got uh, another 15 minutes or so to discuss with you any questions you might have, uh, yeah. which I know Danny and I am both enjoy doing. So what do you see, Danny? Yes, uh, I see on the, on the Whova app, I see a question from Leah Larson. Uh, what is the total cost of planting 100,000 trees? And uh, Leah, I'd like to say, you know, that that's something that we're that we're still trying to kind of figure out. 100,000 trees is is a lot of trees, um, and and what exactly it takes to to get those trees planted is something we're still investigating. But I would keep in mind, um, you know, not only the raw cost of these trees. Obviously, it depends on on what size, what species, what types that are getting planted out there. Um, as to the cost to our to our to our citizens and and to our developers and and landowners, um, but uh, but also the benefits that that we get out of them. I think Lance could probably speak a little bit to sort of the actual the actual monetary benefits that we see out of these. Uh, probably knows those numbers off the top of his head a little bit better than I do. But benefits from stormwater, um, stormwater uh, mitigation, and 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 uh, and um, and diversion uh, benefits from energy energy cost reductions in, in the summer, that sort of thing. Lance, do you uh, have any numbers in your back pocket for that? Um, definitely, and I, I had that slide that talked a little bit about those. So it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of benefit when it comes to ecosystem services for stormwater and for energy. Um, the big one, which we're excited about, the partnerships are around human health that's millions of dollars in mitigated air quality benefits. And so the other thing I would say um, to your question, which is a great one, is that we need help planting these trees. We know that about 30% of these trees through our potential planting locations can go on public land. The other 70% need to go on private land. So, and that's also where we want a lot of benefits. That's a pretty normal split when it comes to, to city trees. The city can lead and show by example, but we need citizens to do that on their own property as well. And the other thing is that the city did a really good job investing. These 500 trees were not cheap. It was a big investment. These are expensive, large trees that we wanted to lead and show the example, but we're not gonna plant 100,000 trees this way. We're gonna partner with the nursery industry. And so when you purchase your tree from Edwards or Franz Witte or Far West, we want you to be able to count that tree towards the challenge. And so today, if you planted a tree from January of 2020 till today, I encourage you to go plot that tree in the City of Trees Challenge because we want to count that tree. In the spring, I envision that we'll have partnerships with the nursery industry where you can actually, when you get your tree, they will provide information on how you can sign up your tree for the City of Trees Challenge. So. It was actually really fascinating. The, the vision that Elaine had came out before COVID hit us, right? And then COVID hit us and we said, can we still do this? You know, Is this still a priority for the city and our residents? And what we recognized as we started talking to people is this really is resilience in our climate. It builds resilience in our community and in our local nursery industry and economy. So we want to support local nurseries. We don't want to give away 100,000 trees that the city has purchased for residents. We want you to go be able to purchase that tree and support our local nurseries, which, by the way, these trees came from Jaker Re Wholesale Nursery, who are a great partner of ours as well. So great questions. Keep them coming. I think there's a few more. Um, we have, uh, do you want to yeah. take a shot at Chris's in the chat? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'm probably the wrong person to ask about planning and development side of side of things. Uh, but we we are working with planning and development. We haven't gotten very far in uh, sort of figuring out uh, you know actual policy changes to to support the City of Trees challenge with planning and development. We've been focused more on how are we going to track trees that are planted at new developments um, so far. 
but that 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 is a discussion that has come up with between us and planning and development. Um, you know, what can we do to actually support the City of Trees Challenge and support more tree plantings um, through planning and development and and through uh, through interesting policy changes. So I'm sorry I can't give you more information on that, but uh, we're 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 still in in kind of the works on 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 that side of it, uh, Chris. Um, and I. I can add to that a little bit, Danny. Um, we've yeah. been approached by a few developers that are excited about supporting yeah. this as well. So as you know, um, through our tree ordinance, uh, you are required when you build houses to plant a certain number of trees in the landscape. And um, what's been cool to see is over the course of the 10 years that I've lived in Boise, um, you've seen the development community recognize the benefits of trees. And so they're actually in a lot of places planting more trees than are required because they realize that it allows, it's a higher value property and it provides more benefits. So um, we love working through uh, challenges and opportunities to find out, again, also the right tree for the right place. Betty uh, asked the question about how does a resident get direction on where to plant and how to plant. What I'm gonna do uh, really quick here as Danny talks a little bit about it is put in the chat a link to our Treasure Valley Tree Selection Guide that is a really good resource that was created in the last two years by the industry. Um, and it tells you a lot about where to plant, why to plant, how to plant. And so I'm gonna pop that in there. And then I also encourage you to go to our website because it is there as well. Yeah, right tree, right place is really our guiding sort of light in the, in the tree planting game here. Uh, it's it's not not just about getting getting the, the tree to a right place, but it's choosing the correct tree for your space is really a better way to look at it. Um, so when you're when you're sizing up that that space that you want to plant a tree, I, you know, that's it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of a flipping on the head of, of how most people I think are, are looking at, at planting a tree. You know, they find a tree that they like and they fit it into their space. But what you what we what we encourage everybody to do is really take a take a look at their space first, and uh, and then choose an appropriate tree for that for that space. You know, you want to you want to look at things like you know, overhanging power lines. You want to look at things like your your sidewalk uh, uh, placement. You want to keep in mind any underground utilities like uh, like water lines and stuff like that and your planting decisions as well as uh, as just shade and uh, and aspect of your house that you're planting it on to get these benefits to get the, the most bang for your buck out of the out of the tree you know um, planting it on the side of your house that is going to give you shade in the summertime where it's needed and then if it's a deciduous tree lose that uh, lose that canopy and then let sun into your home um, to to warm it in the in the winter time I think is uh, is kind of the goal from an energy standpoint with a tree and that's that's where you can where you, where you can like almost immediately see um, see benefits from the tree there's just, just personally um, from planting a tree on your property Will there be workshops? Yeah, so we haven't we we haven't set up set up any yet. Um, what we're trying to do is provide as many of these resources on our website as possible right now. Um, it's it's been a it's been kind of a difficult time to to set up workshops. Um, we had generally a lot more in person things planned uh, before our 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 uh, all of our plans got got derailed a bit and, and we had to find a different way to give away 500 free trees, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, um, workshops is, is, is a great, idea. workshops are a great idea, but I, I mean, what, what we're really focused through our community forestry program is just spreading this knowledge however we can out to, out to the public, so yeah. And I'll chime in a little bit on that, Danny. Um, so community forestry for years has done really good spring tree planting and care workshops. And so I believe that they're continuing to do those. So those are great places to go. Um, yes, Master Gardeners is a great place as well. Um, I know that we've worked with U of Idaho Extension in a few different areas. Um, so I love that idea of engaging them in this as well. Um, the other thing is when Danny showed where we're strategically targeting those 70 trees this fall. Um, we're sending flyers out right now to those houses in that area to try to find people that are ready to get trees. And then we'll reach out to the neighborhood associations to help us 
um, basically come like in a group, come to community forestry, we'll give you a training on how to plant the tree the right way. Your group of people can pick up trees with trailers and then go out into the neighborhood and plant those trees using a great model that the city already has. So that's another opportunity if you wanna participate in a workshop, that'll be a small COVID safe workshop situation. But um, I love the idea and uh, that's all bits and pieces that we can keep building in as this grows. Right. And also with these these free trees that we're giving away down there on the lower right hand corner, you can see just a image of the documentation we're giving out with it. Um, that uh, that has as many resources as you can fit into a trifold. Uh, but uh, we also have links there to our website um, on that and which has just a ton of information, great information for people um, that uh, that uh, uh, will help them plant their tree correctly and really see it thrive for years to come. All right. Um, Lance, I'm, I'm having trouble pulling up the chat. Has anything come up? Can you Yeah, see so Betty just mentioned the Liberty Park Neighborhood Association. So do you want to outline the three neighborhood associations that we're targeting based off of our uh, our data analysis? Yeah, so we we've we've reduced it this uh, this for this year um, because we we pulled up an area of about fourteen hundred addresses and that struck us as a little bit ambitious when we only have seventy trees to give out. So we reduced it down to five. I know that we reduced it down to five hundred, but this literally all just happened earlier this afternoon, and I can't remember the area that was final. Do you did you get a chance to see that email, Lance? So it's in the Bora Liberty Park area. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's in Liberty Park or Bora, but I know that uh, when we've worked with Energize Our Neighborhoods, you guys are doing a lot of work in those two neighborhood associations. So mm -hmm. that's the area in addition to Central Bench that we're looking at. Um, and again, we have a lot of data that we can do a little more robust analysis in coming, um, in coming months, but now we're just excited that we have the data to target that area and yeah. an area that's already engaging in some planning efforts with uh, Boise neighborhoods. So it's a great start and something we can build on. So but, thanks, but Betty. Your, I think we're getting in your area. To your to your question, Lance and, and Betty, I, uh, the the areas that we sort of targeted for this fall and and next spring that we'll that we'll get to are um, Liberty Park, Central Bench, and Bora neighborhoods um, were sort of our our focuses, our early focuses for this program. There's another. Ooh, I, I like this. Chris Cockrell asks about the Idaho Power project. So Chris, um, Idaho Power and that Shade Tree project was the first uh, success story that came out of the Canopy Network working with communities. Um, when we first came up with this, all this urban tree canopy data, Idaho Power said, we want to do this. And we were able to get a federal grant to help stand up that project. Um, and it was super successful, so successful that we planted, I think, 17,000 trees um, across not only the Treasure Valley, but now into Southeast Idaho as well. So we work with the local nursery. Um, it's grown beyond. The unfortunate thing with COVID this year is they had to um, cancel their spring and fall distribution events, but they are looking at what we're learning and working with the Boise Farmers Market of potentially if depending on the COVID situation next year, maybe this kind of a partnership will work. But um, the Idaho Power Project is actually a national model because they are measuring the uh, benefits to uh, peak season energy use reductions from the tree planting. Um, so I'm glad you asked about that. That's, that's like our shining star. Idaho Power is a great um, partner. And if we can help them stand that up again, uh, between 2020 and 2030, those trees can be counted as part of our challenge as well. So great question, they were great. <laughs> yeah, so they, they are combined. Um, we've, been, we've been working with the, just from the beginning, I mean, we've been, we've been working with folks from Idaho Power. Um, so any of those trees that, like Lance said, that are planted within Boise city limits. So uh, the Idaho Power Shade Tree Program is sort of a broader scale than what we're looking at, um, at least from the tree plant, the urban tree planting side of it. Um, the, uh, the, the forest tree planting side of it, the 235,000 seedlings will be kind of separate from Idaho Shade Tree Program. But uh, 
but all the urban trees will be intimately connected. And I might expand um, as we have our last few minutes here. I don't know if uh, if folks need to wrap up from neighborhoods, but um, the you will see after this big push for the urban trees this fall, more talk about what we're doing with the uh, 235,000 seedlings. We're looking at a partnership with Arbor Day, like I said, looking at working with Boise National Forest and growing that beyond. So it's a it's a great story of coming together, of helping rural and urban together and us coming together uh, all across the state for climate solutions. There's another question. Are you going to provide more trees for homeowners in the spring? It's a little much to try and plant this fall. Definitely understand that. And that's what we're evaluating um, as far as the city investment and what makes the most sense. Um, we may or may not be able to do large trees like this again but I guarantee that um, there are gonna be opportunities to purchase trees from um, the local nurseries. And I encourage you to support our local nurseries that grow great trees. Those are where these are coming from. Um, but uh, we will definitely let you know what we're able to offer in the spring based off of budget opportunities and what we're able to drum up this winter and fall. All right. So do we need to, to wrap things up? Not seeing any more questions on. No more questions. This is great. Thanks for all the questions. We we filled up the yeah. time really well. And uh, what do you think, Danny? We we will be looking at the Whova app throughout the rest of the day. I know there's a ton of different uh, opportunities for you to engage. Oh, thank you. So do email us as well. So both Danny and I are um, available to answer questions as this project grows, feel free to email us. And uh, just thanks for the opportunity. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Keep up the difficult questions. That's the only way that we get better at, at making, making this initiative better. So, yeah. Exactly. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Everybody take care and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thanks, everybody.